when, when you got to 88, 89 and everyone started doing pills and like smoking, you know what I mean, good weed and stuff, like all, all the different groups of people came together and were raving together. And that was just a turning point in probably the country's sort of found, you know, foundation. You know what I mean? And it kind of led to what it is today, in my opinion. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd get my grandparents' sound system, my dad's sound system, not sound systems, but hi-fis and stuff. And I was just linking up four speakers, five, six speakers, you know what I mean? Just listening to the music, just just making like compilations and stuff. Just wanted to battle and kill each other, man. You know what I mean? It's just like... <laughs> like a friendly, yeah, we just friend, friendly rivalry. Yeah. Well, it wasn't really even friendly because they were quite... <laughs> like, like, like a lot of our mates were quite, quite crazy, man. So, Sparky. Oh, Sparky, uh, yeah. Sparky's a beast. Yeah. I think Pogo and Swift were just amazing producers as well. Um, Leaf Dog, Dirty Dyke's Dope, my mate Zygote's Dope, Yag Fu Front, Slapping Suckers Silly Remix. See that? Wow. Killer. Yeah, yeah. It's, got a diamond, it's got a Diamond D remix on it, man. Did you go like a uh, four star general? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go four star general. I used to go to general, Mash general as well. George. Mash had the name belts as well. Mash, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, George was cool, man. Like, uh, I can't remember what the graph writer. There was a geezer in the back, like always painting up the shirts and stuff. There's a few of Crimean and uh, Wild Child Ricks. Uh, There's a few, few writers that used to do the graph T-shirts in there. Like Crimean is for me is one of the one of the best best uh, graffiti artists, you know. Yeah. From London, he he's from my my neck of the woods. He's from South East London. I used to see him yeah. painting back in the day. Crimean is an absolute beast. Right, lights, camera action on this Sweet. week's show we have someone who lives and breathes hip-hop uh, who's a dj runs a label and a record shop who's in the mighty steel devils crew and has dj'd for tim dog ransom the bad bones jest and many more and works his magic on the wheels of steel like a wizard conjuring up nice. a spell we have the one and the only Jazz T in the place. Yes, Jazz. Yes. Woo. Yo, good to be here, man. Good to be here. Woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It's great, great. What an intro. Well, listen, man, you, you, we're stepping up to someone who's a wicked hip hop DJ. You've got to give him a big, big intro. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> And as I say, not just a DJ, but also a producer, as well as many, many, uh, you know, record label uh, runner as well. So, yeah, big up, big up to you. Yeah, thanks, man. I mean, like, it's one of those things you got you got to be in everything to make a living out of this game, isn't it? 100%. Listen, man, we, 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 we've got to have fingers in, in, in all pies to get through this, to get through life and make a make a buck. And, and, and obviously, it's doing something that you, you love doing. So... Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. I mean, like, yeah, hip hop's just given me a reason to live. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it's kind of everything. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Look, you're surrounded by it now. I mean, look, look. You <laughs> yeah, are. this is. A, yeah, love being in the lab, man. I was going to say you're in, you're in the old proper ultra lab, aren't you? Yeah. Love yeah, it. this is the one. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to um, you know, to take it back to um, you know, capture your history as well as uh, un unleashing some of um, you know, your favourite MCs, DJs, producers, all that kind of stuff. But first things first, Jazz. What I want to do is give a massive shout out to the big man himself, my homeboy. I know you, you've got a huge love for him as well. It's my man, Colt. 45 yeah amazing man like make, making a like superhero recovery man yeah proper don there man 100 percent, big big up Cole, and i know you're going to be watching this and we've all got your back 100 percent. you're going to pull through this thing as well man we've all got you yeah you know that man you know that so and uh listen jazz this is going to be a wicked interview so anyone watching this share this around the socials because you know you're going to be listening to some wicked hip-hop history and uh you, no one wants to miss this jazz first two questions i got is basically you know whereabouts are you from and what was it like growing up you know as a as a kid was you growing up in that kind of like that 70s era yeah well i mean i'm, I'm like a 71 <laughs> 71 was my year you know what i'm saying so uh i grew up in watford and uh it, yeah it was it was a little bit of um a kind of racist time you know what i mean i think there was some like conservative government shit going on so they they just they were just making indian people the, the brunt of all the bullshit you know what i mean so it was like why haven't you got a job it's because of these people you know what i mean so a lot of the time kids parents were just obviously amplifying this kind of attitude so uh 
it was either be a victim or be a fighter, you know what I mean? So I ended up having to stand up for myself because I'm mixed race, you know what I mean? I'm part mm. Indian, part English, Irish, Scottish, Dutch, you know what I mean? So I'm a mixed. I was kind of a big kid, you know what I mean? And uh, I just had to be sort of aggressive just to make sure that, um, you know, I didn't get bullied, you know what I'm saying? Because it's very, very much a sort of predominantly white area of Watford at the time, you know what I mean? There's only a few, like, uh, families, like a few Jamaicans, a few Indians, a few Pakistanis, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was tough, but, you know, I dealt with it. And, you know, and how, how times have kind of changed now. I mean, it's changed definitely for the better from what it used to be in the 70s. I mean, and, and yeah. I, th I think a big part of that is actually music. Music bringing people together, especially like the hip-hop music, the house music. You know, it kind of, everyone was united in love with the music and brought everybody together as one. Yeah, well, I think definitely, um, I mean, the, the main change for me, I mean, I hate, like, going on, <laughs> just promoting drugs. But in 80, 88, 89, with, uh, before that, like, things were a bit fragmented. But mm. when, when you got to 88, 89, and everyone started doing pills and, like, smoking, you know what I mean, good weed and stuff, like, all, all the different groups of people came together and were raving together. And that was just a turning point in probably the country's sort of, found, you know, foundation. You know what I mean? It kind of led to what it is today, in my opinion, you know what I mean? Basically, you know, when you was growing up, what music was you growing up on? I mean, was you, like, getting into that kind of top-of-the-pop sound, like, on um, when was uh, it BBC Two on a, on a Thursday night? Well, I, I don't know. What, what, I, what I do remember is, like, my, my parents, like, they, they were part of some weird American church at the time, and I don't think they, they weren't very happy about the, the whole pop culture thing you know what i mean i used to watch saturday morning tv and there used to be this thing called saturday scene and they'd be playing all the all the rock and pop stuff and my parents weren't that very happy with me like just having any contact with this stuff at all because i maybe they thought it was just a lot of drugs going on like they just didn't like the uh sort of rebellion of it you know what i mean so they i didn't really i, I used to watch that but that would that that was the music that i used to check out you know what i mean because everyone's just i don't know easy listening stuff and classical music and stuff so i didn't really pick up much from them really um and then my granddad gave me a radio and then you know what i mean after that like there's no turning back from that you know what i mean and then uh yeah and i managed to get my dad's uh my dad had a like a little tape recorder so that, that was the start of me making tapes and stuff so i'd tape stuff off the radio you know what i mean just like compilations of stuff you know what i mean and it would have been like adam and the ants and all that kind of crap you know <laughs> like but but, you know what I mean? That was the start. And then just got into Michael Jackson. And, like, I used to listen to some reggae shows. And, yeah, you know what I mean? It was... That, that was my introduction, really. So what would you say, like, the big question, you know, what would you say was kind of like the spark that lit that flame to get you into, uh, you know, to into, into hip-hop? I mean, I, I, I was into BMXing and stuff. And, uh, again, I got another sort of tape deck thing. And, and you know, I'd be listening to this... <laughs> this pirate station called laser 558 and it was broadcast from the north sea or something and uh they they used to they, they had no playlists so they'd just be playing all kinds of stuff on there and uh i i was hearing like planet rock and rocket and um paul r castle and sort of um craft work and this kind of stuff and i that when i when i heard rocket that's when it kind of clicked for me you know what i mean it's like sh you know shit this is the sound this is I mean, the that, sound what that, is this rocket 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 is such a beast i mean grand mixer dst you know on the on the scratch i mean the the, the track yeah. it, the, the track was absolutely it's so ahead of its time it was wicked wasn't it it's like digga digga yeah, digga was... digga 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 yeah exactly i mean what 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 an intro Oh no, man, and the video is killer as well. I, oh. I just used to be BMXing, like try, trying to ride quarter pipes and that, and just and and that, people would be playing that. And it's like shit, man. This is the sound. This is the sound. What is this? You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. That so was, that that was that, that. That's what got me into it. I think Rock, Rocket was one of them tracks where it was kind of like bring, especially because it was kind of it was on top of the pop so it hit the top 40 so it was bringing more people into like listening to that kind of scratching sound they probably thought what 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 is this yeah exactly exactly it's just yeah it's just, this is ill you know what i mean mm. and, uh, yeah changed my life man <laughs> and what um and what would you say what were the kind of like the early elements of hip-hop you was uh you know repping i mean did you have a little dabble at graph a bit of breaking uh initially i was just listening to the music a lot and because i was into making tapes and stuff um and 
you know, I'd just, I'd, I'd get my grandparents' sound system, my dad's sound system, not sound systems, but hi-fis and stuff, and I was just linking up four speakers, five, six speakers, you know what I mean, just listening to the music, just just making, like, compilations and stuff, so, um, graph I tried a little later, but I, I don't really, like, I like doing 3D artwork, you know what I mean, I'm not really, I don't, I don't get excited by putting stuff on paper, you know what I'm saying, or walls and stuff, it, I tried it, and I was much better at sculpture and stuff, so it never really... I got more of an engineering head than a sort of drawing head, you know what I mean? So, um, I loved being around Graph, but um, I was never really inspired to do it after not being a natural talent at it, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And would you say, like, uh, films, you know, like The Wild Style, uh, Breakdance, uh, Breaking, and uh, like Beach Street, Star Wars, they was all having yeah. a big impact on you as well? I think... Um, I had uh, I got my mum to buy me some tapes for my birthday, and she got me Breakdance Two and uh, Beat Street. But I didn't see Beat Street till a lot later, you know what I mean? Because it just wasn't on, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it wasn't until we got the video of it, and I was in Surrey that I actually saw it. But um, we were watching Breakdance was on a lot on TV, so I was watching that, and you know what I mean? That just seeing Ice T and Chris the Glove Taylor and shit, Wicked. you know what I mean? That, and then uh, Turbo break into. Uh, uh, Tour de France and that, you know, what I mean, yeah. those are just iconic with, 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 moments with the, with, the, with the broom and all that, yeah, 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 classic shit, you know, what I mean, so, but, but, so, I yeah, mean, that, what, that... what, uh, sorry, Jazz, sorry to interrupt, no, no, what, what, what a scene that was where with Ice T, um, you, you know, when they're doing Reckless with Chris the Glove Taylor on the decks, yeah, uh, exactly, in, and Tibetan in the radio jam. Tron, Tibetan yeah. Jam, yeah, wicked Tibetan Jam, actually, I think that was, yeah, but absolutely killer of a tune, isn't it, yeah, man, yeah, and, um. I mean, I, th I think the dress code was a bit strange back then because, like, I, I, that's the only thing that didn't click with me because where I was at, it was all about being a little bit undercover. I mean, you're being noticed anyway because of the colour of your skin, you know what I mean? So I was just like, I wasn't, <laughs> I couldn't really get the way those cats were dressing, but, but you know what I mean? The music and, well, and the performance and, you know what I mean? The style. Well, that, that style was. The dress. attitude. That style of dress was all coming in from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Uh, we, we, yeah, we, we, all the leather outfits with the studded gl uh, gloves with the metal on. Uh, yeah, and, and also you had um, the world class wrecking crew. They oh yeah, what well, Doctor Dre and that yeah. Doctor yeah. Dre was rocking all that as well. Yeah. Oh man, and, and the makeup and that man. Yeah, I got that world class yeah. track. It's a killer track. Couldn't believe it when I saw them in the front though. <laughs> so, <laughs> what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, I mean it's, it's diff different times, man. You know what I mean? Like, they're obviously living in sort of black multiracial communities, or whatever, you know what I mean? And they, you know, but like when, where I was at, you know, you just had to dress like undercover, man, you know what I mean? Who, who would you say was uh, was inspiring you as a DJ? Would it would it have been Grand Mixer DST? Uh, subliminally, yeah, you know what I mean? Because I heard those, they were the first scratches I heard, you know what I mean? And it wasn't until really I sort of come to Surrey, really, where I, there were actual DJs here, you know what I mean? And, and those guys, the actual fit, like uh, my mate Andy Gray, my mate Steve Taylor, Astral Mixer, it wasn't until I saw these actual guys DJing that I actually got into DJing, you know what I'm saying? Because before that, like, I was I was into the sound, I liked the sound of the scratching and that, you know what I mean? I liked the electro records and stuff, but uh, I guess DJ Cheese was one of my, one of the first people that you heard about the battles and stuff. King Cut, but It wasn't man. until King I actually, Cut. yeah, King Cut, exactly. Uh, and coast to coast but it wasn't until i actually saw these djs when i moved to, to guildford that, that um i was like let me try this and then andy let me try it and it was like straight away i got the scratching straight away so it took me about six months to learn mixing but and that's when i kind of got into it so those guys probably inspired me more than the american guys you know what i mean yeah 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 and what would you say what was your first kind of uh you know dj setup did you go straight in for the technic 1200s or was you like? Uh, did you have, did you have those? Um, I can't remember like the Tandy style decks. No, nah, well, what what we had was um, my mate Andy went round his house and he had a stack system, which was I don't know, one point two meters in the air. You know what I mean? So it was a decent height. And then he had a desk, and then he had a phonic mixer, which was like angled like this, and it had no crossfader and he had channel faders, which were nice channel faders. And then next to that, he had this wooden based Pioneer deck which had a metal arm on it and a little yellow shore stylus and that was the first setup I, I sort of ever went on you know what i mean 
Mm. And then I think Andy ended up moving out of his house. He moved into my parents' place for a while. And then we had that that um, Pioneer deck. And then he, he got hold of this uh, JVC deck. And the JVC had a rotary pitch on it. And then somehow, I think he went to, there was an electronic shop in Guildford called Basic Electronics. And he, he went in there and he picked up one of those Realistics, which had the crossfader. Mm. And so that was the first proper setup where we could actually um, mix stuff. Because before that, it was like finding records that were the same tempo. But but once he had that rotary pitch on that JVC deck, then you know what I mean. You could mix. No you could mix. Us. You could mix it up. But could you? Yeah. Um, th th could you uh, do scratching on them decks as well or not? Uh, yeah, they're both belt driven. Right now, scratching wise, uh, he had this style where he'd hold the, the side of the record, and so the JVC wasn't that good for scratching. But the pi uh, the Pioneer. I think we took it apart and it was the platter was spring loaded and I think we bolted the bolted it down so the platter couldn't or the, or the base of the platter couldn't move and it had this little yellow short stylus on it so for scratching because it had the metal arm and everything it, I mean the arm looked like a Technics arm you know what I mean uh, for scratching the Pioneer was sick man you know what I mean it was dope mm. so we could um, you could pretty much do all the current scratches with that setup and it wasn't until I managed to blag my mum to uh, guarantee us on a loan on getting two Technics. So we got the Technics and the where, Technics where, had these... Where would you get them from? Uh, there was a shop in Guildford called Rough Diamonds, run right. by this uh, old DJ boy. Mm. And uh, we, we sort of heard about it. We used to go there, have a look, you know what I mean? Just like dream about all the equipment and that. But yeah, I, I had a job. So I, I sort of talked my mum into guaranteeing us on buying this. So like me and Andy would both pay money every month so we got the Technics but we got these Stan uh, Stanton 680 carts on there we set the Technics up and that and they weren't as good for scratching as this Pioneer thing because this Pioneer had this shore on it which to this day I, I, w I wish I'd kept that that shore you know what I mean because it'd probably be good now and how long would you say you was kind of fine-tuning your craft uh, well Andy was a perfectionist so he would always uh, he would never let us play out you know what I mean? And then eventually me and him sort of parted company and like a couple of other guys came around and they were like, what are you doing? You're an amazing DJ. I'm like, what? what? No, like you should be playing out now. So I'd say that was probably about a year, probably about a year after starting, like people started rating us or me. And then uh, I just started doing house parties because um, Andy took one of the decks. There was about six weeks where I only had one deck and after that i was just like man i need to get another deck because i was like all ready to give up and that and then i just had the bug man i just couldn't give up it's just so i was like mum look you gotta help me buy another deck so <laughs> so we kind of extended that little loan thing you know what i mean i got another deck and then yeah yeah started doing house parties because i was one of the first people to have techniques in the area you know what i mean so whenever there was a party going on people would hit me up and i'd you know what i mean we were doing all the parties so it's dope one good thing about the whole hip-hop thing was uh for me because it's, it's good and it's bad. Being a DJ, it's materialistic, man. I mean, look at all this shit. Mm. It's like when you move house, like it's like what the, you know. It's, what I mean, I had seventy boxes of records when I moved into this place. Seventy boxes, you know. what I mean, fortunately, Miracle helped me pack them all up, and uh, we we had some removals, guys, because I probably wouldn't be walking now if I'd have carried all them. <laughs> but um, but but the, the the bad thing is DJing is well materialistic. You're well, you're, you're sort of got by the balls with all this equipment good thing is it made me always have a job you know what i mean so i always had money coming in you know what i mean and obviously so, you know being a hip-hop dj or hip -hop dj in general i mean basically you know vinyl is key so source, yeah. source, sourcing that vinyl getting them rare gems but maybe somebody else ain't playing is a big part yeah. of it as well the breaks and all that so yeah. where, where was you kind of uh, record digging back in the uh, early years was you going like like charity shops jumble sales groove records all these places all right now basically back in the early days all the music you wanted was uh, current music you know what i mean and all the jazz and the funk and the soul those guys treasured that shit so you'd never yeah. see that in charity shops nah, you just nah, wouldn't no nah, nah. uh, and all those all those records even back then were going for money you know what i mean um so digging wise um there was a virgin records here when i was in birmingham i think there was another virgin there like independent store uh I used to go to Groove. Um, I used to get there was a HMV in Guildford that I used to go to, and I knew one of the guys there. So whenever anything hip hop used to, 
used to come in like he always used to sort me out like he used to buy it on his um staff discount and that which is a proper touch and then uh, we had a collector's record center there was a guy called ian clark who's just a proper head he just had everything so we used to we used to get he used to show us stuff you know what i mean because originally like i wasn't when i got into djing it, I, I didn't come in from a breakbeat angle you know what i mean i, I came in from I, I was playing hip-hop records you know what i mean yeah 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 um so because you know what i mean it wasn't until later that i realized that yeah i need to have breaks you know what i mean what, what, do, you mean, what do you mean later would you say around the kind of 86 87 kind of you know when the um those those uh what were them breakbeat albums that come out oh, know, ultimate, 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 beats. ultimate breaks yeah. and beats yeah would you yeah, say i'd say was, uh, yeah, uh, I'd say probably like eight, eight, seven, eighty-eight. That's when that's when I started getting into breakbeats. When I started rolling with DJ Miracle, because he he was he had killer forty-fives and he had all the ultimate breaks and beats, and he he kind of got me more into like cutting breaks. Because before that, I was still cutting two copies of stuff, but it'd be hip hop instrumentals for my, for the rappers I used to roll with and stuff, and um and also hip hop instrumentals. You know, what I mean, you got like the whole beat. So if a bit wore out, you just like move on. Whereas like breakbeats, you know what I mean? You only got a few bars of stuff, so. But yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, I'd say late eighties, you know what I mean? And have you got like a selection of uh, of like breaks that you absolutely love? Uh, I mean, for me with breaks now, um, I like I like forty fives, you know what I mean? So I've got a lot of breaks on forty five, a lot of doubles forty fives. Um, in terms of breaks break beats on albums i've got them all but i don't have doubles of a lot of the stuff because obviously now with serato i can put all my favorite breaks on there and cut it up and i don't wear the records out you know what i mean yeah and i record yeah, everything as well yeah and i've got everything as wavs you know what i mean so it's it, it just sounds killer you know what i mean anyway so sound wise it doesn't make any difference yeah no, so totally, um totally. but yeah 45s I'm, I'm i've got a lot of breaks from 45 and uh I, i'm sort of collecting all that stuff and just catching up with stuff that i might have missed over the last 35 years or whatever you know what i mean because I, I don't know what i'd do because you know if i was going to collect this really rare kind of 45 break and i've got it on the turntable i'm not going to really yeah. want to start cutting it up to bits and and possibly ruin that record by putting a scratch on it i'd want yeah. it in mint condition because you pay good money for that and it's a rarity yeah i mean for me um my my mate dj random i mean he, oh, he always looks yeah, at, yeah yeah, down, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying so to him records are like a tool so i mean whereas i keep i do keep my stuff in good condition i will cut it up at a party because otherwise why have i got it you know what i mean because yeah, they're, they're tr i treasure these things but also it's like those those are the things that make you as a dj you know what i mean and if you're not playing them out it's like What's i mean point? yeah yeah so you know when you're playing out the rare shit like in front of people and even if a couple of people get what you're doing you know what i mean uh it's worth it and i'll um with a lot of those really expensive records you know what i mean i a lot of them i've only got one of anyway so like i just you know i'll play it and then make, you know what i mean i'll be cutting it with other records so i won't just be cutting the loop up wearing it out which is another way of not fucking this stuff up <laughs> yeah. not getting two copies of like the real rare shit you know what i mean because it just stops you from like mashing them up man no, totally. And a uh, big shout out to DJ Random. I'm going to be uh, interviewing uh, DJ Random shortly, actually, in the next uh, couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's going to be a wicked interview as well. Yeah, he's a legend, man. He's one of the people that made me what I am, you know what I mean? Like me and him going at each other like back in the early days, you know what I mean? It was just, like yeah, pushing, wicked. pushing, pushing each other. Yeah, man, exactly. Actually, I was going to say, because obviously, you, you know, you're in the uh, Steel Devils crew. So, um it was it was uh, DJ Random that started that crew. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, he started the crew. I mean, back in the early days, like in the sort of eighty eight, eighty nine, like his crew used to come over from Bracknell to Guildford, and like we all just wanted to battle and kill each other, man. You know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> like a friendly, yeah, we just friend, friendly rivalry. Yeah. Well, it wasn't really even friendly because they were quite not, <laughs> like, like like a lot of our mates were quite quite crazy, man. So uh, I think the fact that it was hip hop stopped us from actually beat, beating the shit out of each other but you know what i mean I, I think there was a little bit of like <laughs> you know well yeah we didn't really like each other but then, then like years went by and and then we sort of um 
got back. I saw him at uh, the breaks in Reading. Prone used to do this event called the breaks in Reading, and I saw random there, and, and like he just seemed in a really happy, good mood. And I, I, I just remembered him always like being like, "I'm gonna kill you." <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then um, we d we went to another event in Reading, and then um, I actually started chatting to him and. I think DJ Chad actually had come into the record shop and said, yeah, Random wants us all to link up. And then I went to uh, this other thing in Reading and I started chatting to him. It's like, man, this, this guy is just like, he's, he's a don, you know what I mean? Like, why, why didn't we get on and why didn't we do stuff from uh, like back earlier on? But I think the battle thing is kind of what built us and you need that because that's what it's all about. And, I mean, Dom, um, Dom is, is like 100% savage. I mean, you know, he, he's a total battle, battle DJ. I mean, he's like, he's just so natural at it as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, so we, we, we got together and then we played at an event called the Turntablist. This guy called DJ Onion put this event on. And then you had, uh, I think there was myself and Random. We DJed together for the first time ever. So we had four turntables. I'd cut breaks up, he'd scratch. He'd cut breaks up, I'd scratch. We'd cut breaks up together. And it just was like, man, we've got chemistry here. And then um, I'm not sure if Chad played, but uh, Dixie, who's now Gallo Point, was also playing there and uh, Onion played. And I think uh, Box Clever, he, he was also quite a good DJ. I think he did a set as well. And uh, from then, Dom was like, okay, we're going to put a group together. We're gonna, I'm going to call it Steel Devils, and we're all going to be battling. So from then on, we just all started battling, you know what I mean? And I, I didn't feel like I was, I was kind of ready yet, you know what I mean? But I was like, right, five years, and I'll be good enough to, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah rest is history really <laughs> yeah well i can't wait to speak to uh dj random and get that kind of still devil's history and obviously you know the dmc championships and all that and he hasn't got yeah. just one dmc jacket he has to show off and wear yeah. two of them he's got two of yeah. them yeah man i ain't got any dmc jackets <laughs> but we did come <laughs> we did come third in the uh uk's I, I think it was 2003 i was like me chad and random it's just great yeah really proud of that routine man it's on youtube if anyone wants to check it out but yeah yeah it was, yeah it's just that that was a real good time for the crew you know what i mean and we it's did the IT, itfs in europe as well and yeah yeah we just yeah, it was just a tight routine you know what i mean nice piece of music and in terms of uh you know battle djs um can you give me a selection of some of your favourite? I mean, for me personally, like DJ Cash Money is, is without a doubt, I think he's my most favourite uh, battle DJ, scratch DJ. Um, have you got some favourites? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's too many favourites. Right, but attitude wise, I'd have to say random every time, you know what I mean? But in, in terms of other DJs, um, Jazzy Jeff, although I ne he never really battled. Uh, Mr. Sinister, love Mr. Sinister, really into Mixmaster Mike. Uh, shortcut DJ Craze, amazing DJ. Yeah, Cash Cash Money's definitely dope. So many. There's too. Um, there's too many. There's too many. UK. Too UK. Yeah, we've got John First. He's he's a fucking monster. Um, that Pogo. Abu. Pogo. Cutmaster Swift. Well, I was I was going to get to those guys. I mean, Pogo and Business and Swift. They're they're probably. Again, we heard them on the radio. So in terms of influence those guys probably influenced us more than anyone else you know what i mean because um pogo was always on I, I don't know i think it might have been 279 show but he was always on there just smashing it and the business was on westwood show killing it you know what i mean and then other, other djs uk prime cuts you know what i mean absolute monster mr thing dj supreme um, i mean supreme scratching he, he, he's got some wicked scratching yeah yeah no he's he's one of the innovators i mean like all cuba and those guys like, mm. like they always talk about supreme because he, he just had that mate, unbelievable style which is like way ahead of anyone else you know what i mean so, yeah. wicked wicked scratch pattern yeah yeah definitely supreme but yeah, man, it's too many to, to remember, really. <laughs> there's, 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 there's a lot. I'm sorry if we've missed anybody out, but yeah, it was kind of, Jazz was put, put on the spot with that question a bit, probably. So it's time. Yeah, to, no, that's to, cool. <laughs> and, and there's too many, there's too many to name. Yeah. In terms in terms of like, you know, hip hop producers, um, have you got some favorite, you know, hip hop producers like UK and um, obviously US? Yeah, man. I mean, production wise, obviously you've got Premier, Pete Rock, Marley Marl, said G, you know what I mean? Yeah. Godfather Don Blade, like it was a wicked UK producer that never really gets mentioned. Sparky, oh Sparky, uh, yeah, Sparky's a beast. Yeah. I think Pogo and Swift were just amazing producers as well. Um, Leaf Dog, Dirty Dykes, dope. My mate Zygote's dope. Really into Madlib. Loads. Danny Brakes, he's a great producer. 
Uh, I, know, I know he's more on the sort of jungle tip, but like his hip hop stuff's unbelievable. Um, Buckwild, really into Diamond D. Lord um, Finesse, wicked producer. How about the Bomb Squad, Public Enemy? Yeah, Bomb Squad, a dope man. Definitely. Evil Ed, he's another one of my favourites, you know what I mean? Miracle's, Miracle's getting really good these days, you know what I mean? He's like done an L Project, Project 52 with Deflux, man. He smashed that. Too many to, to remember, really. Too many to name. And who would you say was, um, you know, influencing you as a, as a producer? Would it be, obviously, the ones you've just mentioned? Uh, Production-wise, yeah, de definitely. I mean, probably Diamond D, that, that style. Oh, yeah, Michael Parkinson. He's another great producer. And Jest. And Kashmir is smashing it as well. King Kashmir. But then uh, Zygo, you know what I mean? He, we used to work together. And um, his ability to make uh, beats out of just one note you know he'll have one note and that will kind of or just one one little loop small loop and, and that will inspire a whole beat and that 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 was a massive influence on my production i used to work with another guy called optive as well who he was just an amazing engineer rest in peace optive you know but um he um he taught me a lot i taught him a lot but he taught me a lot you know what i mean so a lot a lot of this was first hand stuff rather than necessarily listening to music but i think marley mole obviously as well like hearing Eric B for President and tracks like that, you know what I mean? That the way they were putting the layers together, you know what I mean? Uh, was pretty inspirational. But it wasn't till later that I realised that these had influenced me, you know what I mean? And as you said earlier, like Paul, like said G, Paul C, you know, yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah, Large Pro, he's another one, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Large Pro, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Paul C. I mean, yeah, some of that Super C Lava stuff, man, it's just unbelievable, you know what I mean? Just seamless, seamless music, man. Just... Oh, totally. And, uh, you know, uh, as you said, Jazz, you know, you're a producer. Um, but the question is, you know, like, who would you love to produce for in terms of, like, MCs? Um, I mean, I've, to be honest, like, I pretty much work with most of the people that I've wanted to work with. But moving forward, I definitely want to do some stuff with Godfather Don. Um... I mean, like, like the last guy I really wanted to work with was Juggernaut, you know what I mean? And, I, and I've done a seven with Juggernaut now. Actually, we did a show together like last week and yeah, it was killer. Um, yeah, definitely Godfather Don. Uh, anyone else that I really want to work with? I mean, the thing with me, like working with people, like I probably said this in a few interviews, I'm not really one of these people that I don't like just like paying for verses. I don't mind paying for verses, but... For me, like, I like to make music with people that I rock stages with. Because I rock stages with a lot of rappers. Oh, yeah, there's another guy called Too Bad I want to work with. Um, but, yeah, I like, pretty much, I'd say 99% of the stuff I've made, people that I've made music with, I've rocked stages with. So there's chemistry there. It isn't just, like, a financial exchange, you know what I'm saying? And I think it just makes for better music when you do it like that. For me personally, you know what I mean? Other people, it's different. If you're, if you're a producer that you're not doing shows like that then cool whatever but because i'm a dj like the um chemistry comes from rocking shows together so even with percy p and yeah and, and uh tim dog and those guys you know like i actually i've got tim dog in the lab and that and, and and we recorded all the stuff but i i I ended up doing shows with him and then the stuff that we, he did on my album was because we had that chemistry you know what i mean and percy p as well like we did the percy p tour i was spinning for him so there was some there, there was some something there you know what i mean as opposed to just like this is my beat can you rhyme on it you know what i mean because the whole crew thing and the family thing and the love like and you know what i mean the actual communication but like knowing people just makes for better music man you know what i mean there's like there has to be kind of like a chemistry between the two of you to, yeah. you have to be on that kind of on that kind of similar kind of level and how did you uh you know how did you hook up with tim dog tim dog was a crazy one man because um uh, my my group Diversion Tactics, m myself, Zygo, Chubby Alcoholic, Squeaky the Rickster. Um, we would Chubby was doing. I think he was doing a, a solo album or something. But one of the artists that he always wanted to get on stuff was Tim Dog. And then Zy, Zy also wanted to get Tim Dog on one of his records because he he was doing his solo album as well. Um, and my friend Ewan, who's Army, was. Um, a journalist for a magazine called Undercover Magazine, Nat Illuminae's magazine. Undercover Magazine was a pretty dope magazine. We actually made the cover at one point, <laughs> me and Zai. Anyway, so um, I, I was speaking to you and I was like, yeah, 
really would like to get Tim Dog on this on a couple of records. And he was like, "Oh, Tim Dog, yeah, he was trying to get on the cover of the, of, of the magazine." And I've been talking to him. Uh, I've got his number if you want it. I was like, oh, "Really?" <laughs> so I just <laughs> I got his number. I was just thinking, do I find Tim Dog? Like, you know, I've listened to the records, man. He might end up fucking kicking the shit out of me or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was just like, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to phone him up. I phoned him the, up. The thing is, though, like, Jazz, you don't come across as like a nerd. You come across as a real kind of cool cat that's really calming and all that. So you must have been, was you a bit kind of shaky ringing Tim for the first time? Um, Yeah, well, this is it, man. So I'm just I'm just in my, my fucking dining room thinking. Well, so I, I do it, so I do it or not? So I do it or not? Yeah, I was, I was just thinking, how am I going to do this? It's like, you know what I mean? We're like worlds apart. But you think that, but in reality, you're not. No. But in my head, it's like, this is, you know, these cats aren't a lot older than us, you know what I mean? But in my head, it's like, fucking hell, this is the geezer that uh, him and said G come up with the uh, fuck Compton plan, you know what I mean? And, and, and you know what I mean? They're, 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 they're talking about like some massive fucking bloodbath possibilities, you know what I mean? And I'm just going to phone this geezer up. So I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And I phoned him up. I said, yeah, Tim. Um, I'm um, jazz tea, whatever. Um, and my sister used to go out with this guy called Mark, and I know I know Mark knew Tim, so I kind of name check Mark. Sorry, Mark, but um, I, I said, yeah, I, I'm jazz T. Mark just used to go out with my sister, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I got money. We want to do some tracks with you, you know what I mean? And I'm also a DJ. If you ever need anyone to spin, and he was like, Yo, you know Mark? He's like, Yeah, I'm in London next week. Wow. Uh, Come, yeah, come to the studio. You know what I mean. We'll link up, make it happen. It's like, okay. <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah, so the, the the next week I went up with my mate at uh, Junk Boy. Just went up there and uh, uh, Tim was in the studio with um, Two Seven Nine and some other producer. And that, <laughs> no, well, cagey. They were taking me around the houses like like to get to this studio. And it's like, fuck's sake, you know, I'm not going to rob the place. You know what I mean? You got Tim Dog in there, fool. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to rob the place. But anyway, so I finally get to the, um, finally get to the uh, tower block that it's in. Went in there, and met him, and it, yeah, he's just fucking sound man. I played him a load of Zygotes beats, my beats, you know what I mean? And he he was just into it, man. You know what I mean? So from then, um, we sorted out a time where he was coming into the country. I just paid for his hotel, took him to Zygotes lab, just recorded a couple of joints, paid him the money, and then. I think a couple of days later, he was like, yo, Jazz, can you sort out, you know, sort out a plane ticket for 279, I'll sort you out, you know what I mean, when I get back, and we'll do some shows as well. And then, yeah, the relationship sort of built on that, you know what I mean? Um, and then, yeah, just ended up DJing for him for a couple of years, you know what I mean? And what was Tim Tim like? He must have been, uh, he, he must have been a, a really kind of cool geezer, do you know what I mean? Uh, it, <laughs> t Tim is a survivor, man, you know what I mean? So, uh yeah he's probably the realest person and the most uh clever person i've ever met um yeah great guy um just mad charisma you know what i mean mad star with the ladies you know what i mean just uh <laughs> when you yeah. do shows with him he sounds like the fucking record man you know what i mean um f funny funny person you know what i mean and uh yeah we got on really well you know what i mean and uh he don't yeah, if, if you're an idiot, man, you get stepped on, you know what I mean, with, with with people like Tim, you know what I mean? But that's just that's just life, man, you know what I mean? If you haven't listened to the records and you're expecting to be, uh, you know, there's certain rappers that, that, you know, they're not lying, and he's one of them. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and me and him just got, yeah, we're really good friends and that, you know what I mean? And I'm just kind of, yeah, it's a shame, probably, well, unless he is still alive, <laughs> you never know, but yeah, it's just... It, yeah, it's, it's a horrible thought to think that I'm never going to see the geezer again because, like, you know, they were some great days, man. You know what I mean? I mean, we were, we were in, we were in um, Australia to get like for three, four weeks, three weeks. You know what I mean? Just chilling in Australia, just doing shows, going to the cinema, just you know what I mean? <laughs> like eating out, going to bars and shit. You know what I mean? It's like I miss that shit. Yeah, no, without a doubt. 
Um, and big up to uh, Tim Dog. Um, I was going to say, Jazz, you know, like artwork is a really kind of important part of the package with vinyl. I mean, you don't get that with like MP3s and digital formats. So the artwork, no. you know, an art part, artwork is like a big selling point with the vinyl. So there's been so, so much good, unbelievable artwork throughout the years. Have you got yeah. some like favourite, you know, favourite um, covers? Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a light down there, man. Give me a second. I'll... Now, they, they, these records here, they, they, these are all... Uh not our own records but i mean they, they, these are all covers that just i, I fucking love man so f right let me try and get this right speaking of dst man oh this way Wicked. Yeah. the home of hip-hop man uh look at that i'm just Wicked. chilling on the cover there i love that chrome shit and the lights of flight cases and that man Yep. So I, I, I first heard this record on maybe electro 9 or something and then i finally was lucky enough to get the 12 man so it's like I love that shit, you know what I mean? Mm, Some wicked. classic business. Another record, like Audio Two Top Billing. Uh that that was a favourite. But then I heard this this solo joint that Melk had done. And uh it took me years to find it because I think for some reason this record was really hard to get hold of. But th th this one, um Milk, get off my log. It's just a bloody log. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Can you see that? Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen and, it. And this tune is just banging, man. It's absolute mm. banging. It's one of them forgotten classics. But you know what I mean? It's just a log on a white cover. But, you know, to me, that was just like, man, that's art, bruv. Right, another one. Uh, right, let's get the angle right on this as well. Slick Rick, Behind Bars. Now, this is like a... He's done it like a little storyboard. I don't know if you've seen the video for Behind Bars. But this is kind of like a storyboard of the video. You know what I mean? Almost. And this is all like little pictures of like what was going down when he was inside and that. So I was really loving that. And I love the track, you know what I mean? Here we got KMD, Nitty Gritty. Now this, they got mad, hold on. Yeah, they got into mad trouble for using this, lo this little character, man, you know. It just said a lot about the time, you know what I mean? And uh, another one of my favourites. Right. Yag Fu Front, Slapping Suckers Silly Remix. See that? Wow, killer! Yeah, yeah. It's got a diamond. It's got a diamond D remix on it, man. It's absolutely dope artwork. Wicked cover. Yeah, man. Another record which isn't hip hop, but it's just like Brit funk. And this is before they went pop, really. Level forty two, pursuit of accidents, man. Beautiful. Broken glass. Uh, broken glass in the street. Fucking mm. rainbow. You know what I mean? Just dope. Just and a wicked record as well. You know what I mean? Just, Beautiful. Uh, I love so. that. I love the rain, like the rainbow coming out the uh, or going into the drain. Either way. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's killer. It's killer. And it's, it's a wicked album. I definitely recommend it. It's, it's not their pop shit, you know what I mean? Uh, and there's two more. Right. This one. Ooh, Probably one yeah. of my favourite records of all time. Donald Bird Places and Spaces, man. Wicked. It's one of those um, covers. I like artwork which makes you want to be there. Mm. And you look at that and you want to be there. You know what I mean? And, and they, they just come correct with that. That's just the perfect visual representation of the, the music, I reckon. So, yeah, love that. And then last of all, man, this is probably my favourite of all time. Saying about the colours, man. Main source, Breaking Atoms, man. I mean, that is just... Wicked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just... and to, for, I mean, they were the days before computers, really. So someone's actually made that by hand, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, fucking yeah. unbelievable. So, yeah. Yeah, that's my selection of covers, man. And also, and also, um, you know, you uh, you got a label as well, Boot Records. Yeah, we've got Boot Records, man. Uh, Zygote started it in 1999, and uh, he left probably in about 2015, so I've been, mm. like, running on my own. But um, you want to see some Boot releases, yeah? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, we've done some crazy stuff on Boot. Um, the la the, one of the last things we put out was this. This is uh, myself and Juggernaut. Yeah, this is marble and granite. This is uh, yeah, this is one of the favourite things I've ever done. Really, I I literally um, I got this Akai S six one two sampler, and I've just been experimenting by putting drums through it. So I just made this really hard break, found a bass line, and I was going through some library records. I found a killer loop, and I just sent it to Jugs, and he was like, "Yep, uh, what do you want to do with that?" And I said, "Well, we could do a forty five. You know what I mean?" Day later, he sends me the bars. Day after that, I do the cuts. Um, the week after that, I. You know what I mean? Or two weeks after that, I'd get the test presses back, you know what I mean? So, that's marble and granite. Um, 
the other this is the latest release this is a a canadian um producer called sends beats he's he's from he's living in canada at the moment i think it's from belgium originally and uh it's got roughneck jihad the rapper from third sight that crew which is roughneck jihad and d styles from uh scratch pickles yeah d styles another dj i love by the way um and this this is a little assassination handbook this has just come out on boot so you can still get this on the boot band camp the next record that's coming out on the label is my remix of uh catastrophe which is a track from that record but other stuff ramps and bad bones this is a silver surfer project oh wicked i love that look at that yeah this is this artwork's hold on yeah i love that yeah, i love the art the it. artwork's amazing yeah this is by uh stilts mm. he's 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 done loads of artwork for for our label so that this was actually the follow-up that's the silver surfer album and that was the follow-up to this which is another this is cashmere hold on uh okay. this is uh the galactus album so the silver surfer was uh follow up to that mm. but yeah still still just kills it man Wicked. mad skills um another great record stilts artwork this is um this is myself and lee scott i love it it's just beautiful isn't it it's, it's, it's part as i say it's part you know part of the package yeah man and um this one came out earlier this year. This is Rams and Bad Bones, Dark City. It's another stilts mm. fucking mental artwork. Dark City. And then the back's crazy, man. Uh, see that? <laughs> yeah, the old shoot up. Yeah. Love it, love it. That's stilts again. Um, that's still available, Dark City, on the boot band camp. Then we've got Michael Parkinson, Back in Business. This came out at the end of last year. Not many copies of this around anymore, but this is a killer record. Um, Three tracks produced by Parky himself, one track produced by me, and one track produced by me and Zygo. One of my favourite records we've done. It's got Napoleon the Legend on there as well. Um, mm. American Cats, Wicked. And then uh, probably one of the records I'm most proud of is um, it, back in about 2008, I spoke to business and I was like, you really want to do some stuff with um, Bionic? And he was like, yeah, 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 just take his number and just give him a call. I was like, what, just give him a call? He said, yeah, 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 be fine, be fine, you know what I mean? He'll it, be up for doing stuff. I was like, really? Because Bionic, to me, was kind of on that Tim Dog level. It's like, I've, I've seen Bionic getting aggy with people, man. I was just like, uh, <laughs> well, I'm just going to phone up Bionic. So I phoned him up, and he was cool, cool as fuck, man. I just went around there with Zygo, played him a load of beats, and um, one of the beats he, he actually wrote a track to. Um, and it was, called, it was called Super Lover at the time. Uh, that's the cover there, done by Ronnie Wanner. Wicked. Um, yeah, it was called Super Lover at the time. Um, I, I did some cuts for it and that. And then I ended up DJing for Jess. And me and Bionic kind of sort of were out of contact for years. And then Rodney somehow got him back to do the London Posse reunion. And I kind of reconnected with him. And uh, I saw him at one of the DMC uh, championships that I was, I was DJing, I was doing all the background music, you know what I mean? I, was, I saw him and he was like, yeah, I remember you. And I said, well, we did a track together. I don't know if you remember it. And he was like, no, no, uh, I think so. Just email it to me. And I emailed it to the wrong email address and then <laughs> put a one on there and, and then I'll get a phone call. He's like, right, yeah, this this is the track we need to come, we can't come back out to, you know what I mean? So um, redo the cuts. Because I'm not on that. Because I was using some other cuts that were like a little bit sexist and that. Uh, from one of his other tracks, he's like, "No, nah, I'm not on that that thing anymore." You know what I mean? We just changed the cuts up and um, do a B-side, and yeah, and we'll put it out. And uh, he was like, "I also want to do the video in New York." So mm. we ended up going to New York. It's an incredible tune. I mean, I absolutely love it. I mean, it's, and the video oh, thanks, to man. it, the video to it as well is is next level. It's such, such, I mean, Barnick for me as well is he's absolutely wicked. Yeah, and and to to have him on, have have him having done something on boot, man, it's just like, you mm. know, it's just unbelievable, really. I mean, and and again, he was just such a wicked guy to work with. I mean, we've done a load of other tracks, but it's up. I mean, he's back in Ghana now, so it's up to him what we do with him. You know what I mean? But for personal for my like personal collection there's a couple of bangers in there you know what i mean that one day might see the light of day right so this is the artwork for that seven the next seven that's coming out on boot it's done by matt littler i don't know if you can see that properly mm. there's just a couple of stickers because i haven't actually got a wax back yet so that's going to be another killer but yeah with the barnick record i just want to big up lee scott because um i 
played it to him. But well, I told him about it way before I saw Barnick again. And I played it to him and he was like, man, that's got to come out. Because I, I, I just, I was, I loved it, but Zygote wasn't that into it. And um, my mate Squeaky was really into it. And uh, I played it to Lee Scott. He's like, nah, man, that's got to come out. It's got to come out. So he, he was one of the people that pushed, pushed me to sort of reconnect with Barnick and try and get the project moving you know what i mean and, and in the end it like all came together nicely you know what i mean and how, how can people support these tracks i mean have you got like a website directly they can go to uh the best way to get all this music is on the boot records Bandcamp. everything's on there that that you can still get um we we've, we've got a good distributor so a lot of these records are available in shops you know what i mean you should be able to get our stuff on hhv in germany uh suspect packages has the whole boot records back catalog uh our stuff's on juno and so it's, it's, it's in all the best places but if you want to you know the, obviously band camp most of the money goes direct to us and then we can split with the artists and stuff so you know i mean that's that's probably the the best place to go for but you know go whatever whatever people's favorite place is to buy records really just 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 support it yeah without a doubt yeah yeah and and jazz you know how did you get your name jazz t uh jazz t was like <laughs> kind of mispronouncing my name when I was a kid you know what I mean because uh, my name's actually Steve so I just yeah I won't say what it was but you know that that was the motivation behind the tea and then the jazz was just like that was always a style of hip-hop I was into you know what I mean when I when I heard jazz being sampled in hip-hop I just thought this is my this is the style of, of hip-hop you know and that kind of represented me and at the time there was a lot of jazzies and jazz this mm. and you know what I mean it, it seemed like an appropriate name at the time all round. Did you ever go like a uh, four-star general? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go four-star general. I used to go it's to general, Mash general as well. George. Mash had the name belts as well. Mash, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. George was cool, man. Like, uh, I can't remember what the graph writer, there was a geezer in the back, like always painting up the shirts and stuff. There's a few of Crimean and uh, Wild Child Ricks. Uh, there's a few, few writers that used to do the graph t-shirts in there. Yeah, yeah. Crimean done, do, actually did my logo. I've got one here. Did he really? Um, well, yeah. you know, Cry Crimean is for me is one of the one of the best best uh, graffiti artists. You know, yeah. from London. He he's from my my neck of the woods. He's from South East London. I used to see him yeah. painting back in the day. Crimean is an absolute beast. Yeah, 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 absolute don. So yeah, yeah I was really honoured for him to to do my logo. Let's have a look in these drawers, man. I swear I've got one here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got one. Yeah. Wow. So this is a Crimean artwork. Yeah. Let me, uh, wow. Look at that. That is wicked. That is yeah. pure Crimean style with the long two fingers on the, yeah, on the, on killer, the vinyl. Man. Wicked. Yeah, I'm so lucky to have that, man. It's such a don for doing that. You know what I mean? You, you need so to get yeah, that put on, on some merch, uh, jazz on some like hoodie tops and all that. No, definitely. Definitely. That's, that's definitely the plan to sort of get onto that stuff. Cause there's, there's a bit, you know what I mean? I've got money in the bank with boot, you know what I mean? So, we need to like invest in some stuff which is gonna but the thing is i need i need to do it i've got an album in in the working with joe armand jones that jazz art uh, jazz keyboard player but he's one of the biggest jazz artists in the country now so he's, he's quite a busy man he's always putting stuff out so what when that album drops then i'll probably use that on some merch as well just so everything ties in with the release you know what i mean rather than just put it out rago you know what i mean yeah 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 and uh you, you know you obviously you work in the record shop dance two records yeah dance two records man with my man hands just been working there since probably 97 i've got the job there wow so yeah that's that's been cool man just it started off just mainly selling hip-hop records like I, I i was they brought me in just to sell hip-hop records and just dmc merch and stuff but then yeah i just ended up i mean i'm into all kinds of stuff man obviously hip-hop's what i, what yeah, I am yeah. what i do but, but, you, know, like, but, you, like... but you think about it, hip hop really covers all styles of music because you're going through yeah, breaks, through rock music, you 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 know all styles yeah. of music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, yeah, it's made of everything. So so yeah, yeah I'm into my jungle, my you know what I mean, my jazz, funk, soul. You know what I mean? I don't I even like some of that early house stuff. You know what I mean? So working in the record shop, I kind of know what's good in all genres to to a point. You know what I mean? So. So I went from just doing hip hop to just getting involved in the whole thing, you know what I mean? And yeah, but I'm still there now. But we don't like turned into an expert on repairing turntables and like I can repair pioneer equipment. And my boss has taught me loads about sound systems and amps and shit. So it's just yeah, it's just made me a better like sound engineer overall. You know what I mean? It's 
it's been good. And where's uh, where's man? You know what I mean? Where's Dance Two Records? Where can people find you? Uh, it's in Guildford. We don't. Uh, we got a website, but we don't sell stuff online. It's all about the shop. So uh, I've got a wicked selection of hip hop, uh, drum and bass. Got some nice house bits in there. Got some good second hand stuff. Some old school hardcore. Got like some good forty fives and stuff. We don't keep masses of stock, but there's always dope shit in there. Um, so yes, yeah, Guildford Town Centre, just opposite Barclays Bank, man. It's worth coming down, man, because you'll always find something there. So anyone watching this, get and like yeah, like I say. Get yourself down to dance to records. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like I say, we're sort of Technic specialists now, man. So we can pretty much fix anything on a Technics. And if we can't do it, we've got another engineer that can, you know what I mean? So actually, and actually got some Technics completely resprayed the other day as well. So I can get that done as well. Can, oh, can you? What, uh, what, you can do all different colours? Yeah, yeah. I've got, I know how to strip the decks down, to, like totally strip them down. It's quite an expensive wow. job though, but, but it can be done, you know what I mean? So... Yeah. They, they they look beautiful. Do you remember the gold the gold ones? Yeah, the gold ones are killer. Yeah, wicked. Yeah. And I was gonna say to Randy Randy something now, Jazz. Uh, what would you say would be your kind of biggest highlight so far? What in terms of shows or? Yeah, I suppose Just... we've got to keep it on that hip hop thing, isn't it? I mean, obviously, you know, there's other massive highlights as well. But on that hip hip hop tip, on the hip hop tip, um, one one of my all-time favorite things was uh we we're in denmark i managed to get tim to denmark uh with my man Ty typhoon typhoon's like um he used to do the new mu music seminars and that he's just a killer he's like a legendary danish dj he's the don out there you know what i mean mm. uh he, he's i think he's the one that maybe taught dj noise or or something like that but they're really good friends anyway so typhoon i managed to make the show happen and uh we we're just rocking the show in in this club called rust in denmark and got to the end of the show and tim was like right yo i ain't gonna do an encore and everyone's like ah <laughs> and he said all right i'll do an encore what do you want me to do and uh loads of people were calling for a chorus line and tim was like no nah, no nah, i ain't gonna do that i ain't gonna do chorus line and i just got my copy of chorus line out put it on and, <laughs> and he had to do it <laughs> uh, you like forced him forced him into it <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, I know I know he could do it anyway, and everyone yeah, wanted yeah. it, and he, he just wasn't. But he's just a natural, like he, he, after he said the first word, like he, he's just got it. You know what I mean? He's just he is he is his lyrics. You know, he's just so we did that. That was killer. Um, we did that Outlook Festival. Just had just had a, a band. He's had a couple of bands. The first band was um, him, Parky, Faye Simon, Quake bass on the drums, and Lou Slippers on the. Um, on the bass and we'd just done tour i think his album dragon of ordinary family was out and we had a booking in outlook festival and we were doing the main stage just before uh very munch and we literally went up there did did a line check and smashed the stage in front of about twenty five thousand people man wow that that was crazy um that that was definitely a highlight another highlight would be um it's all shows for me, man. Because I, th I think with me, the energy of the show is like, is what keeps me going. But um, I did Essential Festival. I DJed for Souls of Mischief for three dates. So uh, we did Essential Festival just before DITC and just performing tunes with Souls of Mischief was just crazy. And I, I, I think we just put out a 12 on um, Zebra Traffic, Diversion Tactics had. And before Souls went on, I played that and like, Somehow I just had the massive like following and like the right hand side of the audience, you know what I mean? And everyone was fucking screaming. So yeah, that 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 that, that was good. Um, what else, man? I, I recently, <laughs> earlier this year, I played the um, Community Scratch Games, which is just a real some of the best turntablists in the world play at this thing. And uh, Manipulate invited me to play there, and I played that. And you know, it's one of those things where you really got to pull it out of the bag, man, because everyone is so good and and i was just I, I was just a little bit wow i'm actually gonna do this and i did it and i pulled up did it 18 minute set and it yeah just kind of rocked it man and you know there's bits of it where i was like oh, i could have done better there but like they all liked it man so for, for me to, to perform in front of those guys and for them to sort of be like yeah you've done a good set man that that, that was another highlight you know what i mean has it ever gone? Uh, has it ever gone wrong for you, where like you've been DJing, you know, in front of like loads of people, and suddenly like the needles kind of jumped or or whatever? Is it ever? Yeah, gone well, 
yeah, all, all, I, mean, I wouldn't say all the time, but no. on, a lot of the, you know, it's, I mean, out of out of a hundred shows, you know what I mean? Like sort of fifteen, they're going to have like little things going wrong. How do you handle uh, it? But, How do you handle that? Uh, well, basically, part of the skill is to make mistakes look. It's 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 like being a magician, you know what I mean? You fuck up next you know what i mean you don't make a big thing of it like i see a lot of djs fucking up and they'll be turning around they'll be pointing at the equipment they'll be doing this man i'll fuck up i just ignore it and carry on you know what i mean because at the end of the day people are there to see you it's how you handle that mm, you know I've, I've been on st I've, I've been watching bands and like the fucking strings will break on on the guitar you know what i mean and they just carry on like you know what i mean they just use the other strings you know what i mean or like latest one like that mate he was in in, in mid flow and like the, the uh cable comes out the back of the guitar you know what i mean and like for a couple of seconds like they're sort of you know a bit of quiet and then he'll plug the shit back in but he didn't make a big thing of it and that's what i'm like i, I fuck up you know what i mean i don't make a big thing of it i'll just start again and just just carry on and then and make yeah. sure when it drops it's just better than it would have been anyway so it's all about staying professional keeping that command you know to staying in command of what you're doing you know what i mean mm. and um and also like i mean the worst ones right the radio show because you know what i mean with, with on the radio show you haven't got the energy of the audience and like you might be beat juggling and then something might not cue right and that and you're just thinking damn this is, people are going to listen to this back but you just gotta carry on you just gotta yeah it, it's just part of live music man I, and, I and not 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 be destroyed by it you know what i mean <laughs> That's an hour without a doubt. I was going to say to you, uh, Jazz, what, what do you DJ on? Uh, Kane FM? Kane yeah, FM. Kane FM. Uh, yeah, my friend Nomis and my other friend uh, Fame, they uh, started, well, Kane, actually, pro before that, in the early 90s, Nomis and a load of other guys started Kane and it was a, it was a pirate, you know what I mean? And that, mm. that went on for years. And then um, uh, Nomis and Fame got together and d decided they were going to do it properly. So they did an RSL, one month RSL, and me and my boys did like, did it once a week for for the for the four weeks and um basically after that they did all the legal legal stuff and they managed to get the license so they've been i think it's been going for about probably about 10 years now seven to ten years and uh, yes like legal community station but um we've got the boot record show on there and there's loads of other killer shows and we just no playlist just play what we want to play only only problem is like, we've got to do radio versions so spend a lot of time fucking reversing swear words but because a lot of the new music <laughs> back in the days you, you you know you had clean versions on records but nowadays like people just aren't that bothered so i'll just end up having to edit stuff and just reversing swear words but other than that it's great you know what i mean well, what we've got to say is big up to all the DJs out there doing your thing on all these stations because you're the ones that are keeping this music out there in the spotlight. And, um, you know, we are, as I say, back in the day, listening to pirate stations like Invicta, Kiss FM, when it was illegal, and LWR, all those stations, it brought the yeah. music out into the spotlight. And if yeah, it wasn't exactly. for DJs like yourself doing these things, all the, you, you, you know, we've got to hand it down to all you DJs for, for doing that. Yeah, thank you, man. No, no, definitely, man. And uh, yeah, because like, if we don't do it, no one's going to do it. No. Nah. You know what I mean? Because it's like revolutionary music, isn't it? It's, it's like radio state. I don't know. It's normal radio stations, man. It's just fucking terrible, man. It's just <laughs> absolute garbage. It's, you wonder why everyone's pissed off with each other. You know what I mean? You listen to the, the same, dreary, same old crap, same old rubbish. Just dreary, depressing love music and just like, yeah. it just fucking really dumbs people down, you know what I mean? It's like a bit like the news, really. And then the adverts and shit, it's just terrible, man. So like, yeah, it's just nice to be a part in bringing reality and revolution and uh, expression back, you know what I mean? So big, uh, yeah, big up to all you DJs out there doing your thing, but like Sammy J and, uh, you know, all, all them DJs, absolutely wicked. Yeah, yeah, man. And Jazz, what can I say? Absolutely brilliant interview. Um, is there anyone you want to give a little shout out to, or do you want to kind of keep it whipped? You know, because there's too many people to to name. Uh, no, no, no. There are some people, man. I, I want to shout out firstly my uh, Tash, my missus, and my kids, Mir and Louis. Um, big up DJ Miracle, who I always managed to not give him a proper shout out. You know, he's my partner in crime with the radio show and stuff. Um, 
big up random chud dixie uh dj one of a kind um thanks to business and pogo for being like massive influence and uh inspiration uh want to big up ramps and bad bones real close friend of mine great guy to work with cashmere joker star uh blade because that interview i've done with blade like put me out there to a lot of people who might not have known who i was and yourself you know what i mean for this much appreciate this man um so yeah. big up sammy b sides uh leaf dog bva the rest of the four owls um juggernaut and hands my boss at the record shop you know what i mean it's just for being a don you know what i mean and just believing in believing in me from day one you know what i mean and there's probably a load of others but oh no michael parkinson man can't forget parky you know what i mean hopefully have another record coming out soon you know what i mean as well yeah, and sense beats big up to all them and what i've got to say jazz is actually the first time i met you was at the cult 45 barbecue and i've got to say yeah. what a night putting all this hip-hop thing to one side what a nice guy you are oh bro thank you man and that, 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 that means more than any of this hip-hop stuff you're 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 such a such a you know down to earth nice guy and that you know that means everything oh thank you bro <laughs> no i appreciate that man like you know until I get into a car. <laughs> then you change. Then you change, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then I'll turn into a warrior. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, no, thanks, man. Like, it means a lot, you know what I mean, coming from you and... Uh, no, you're, re you're yeah. really grounded and level. Honestly, big, big up and we and hip, hip, listen, hip hop salutes ya. Thank you, man. I just, I've just got to sort of give a bit of a push to the chest tour. So we're going on tour oh, at the yeah, end of yeah, this yeah, month. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you've you got yeah. a tour coming up yeah yeah so so it's the end of october there's there's about six, five or six dates you know what i mean that'd be just myself and confucius you know what i mean so look out for that if this if this goes out before that then yeah people check some of those dates out you, you can check all, all the dates on my instagram you know what i mean yeah so please please follow uh, jazz on his instagram channel and you, you can have all the dates in there for this tour support the tour because that's where the real hip-hop is happening wicked and anyone watching this, subscribe to this channel. I've interviewed Skinny Man, Chester P, uh, Public Enemy, Sed G, Ultra Magnetic MC, Scheme from the TMT crew, T Kid, and many more uh, legends in this game, as well as unsung heroes, a, a blade Amazing, and people man. like that. So yeah. uh, listen, as I say, uh, Jazz, hip hop salute you, my man. It's been an absolute honor. And I hope, I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for giving up your Sunday morning to do this as well. No, no worries, man. It's an honor to be on here, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, wicked. No, I thank you, man. It, my man. Listen, and all, all the best. Nice one, man. Peace. Peace from the southeast. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs>